Okay, we're ready to start with our first game of this instruction. White starts with E4. E4 is one of the most common starting moves in chess. This move occupies the E4 center square as well as it attacks another center square on D5. It also has another advantage by opening up the diagonal of the bishop as well as of the queen. Black responds with G6. G6 is a, an okay starting move, even though it does not directly occupy or control the center. However, it has an advantage to it, opening up the diagonal of the dark squared bishop, getting ready to develop it to G7 along the long diagonal, which will control two center squares. White's next move is D4. D4 is a wonderful move. It occupies another center square as well as attacks a fourth one on E5. Now white has full control of all four center squares. It also has another advantage, opening up the diagonal of the dark squared bishop. Black plays knight H6. Wow, that's a bad move already. Knight going to the edge of the board. It certainly does not belong there. It should come towards F6, which would control the center. Also, another problem with this move is that it delays the development of the bishop. Usually, when black or white, for that matter, plays the so-called fianchetto, developing the g-pawn, you right away would want the bishop to come to g7. White plays knight F3. Again, white does the right thing, developing following the second rule that we discussed, as well as the first one, controlling the center. The knight from f3 controls two center squares, d4 and e5. Black responds with knight a6. That's another error. Just like we said, the other knight developing to the edge of the board, this knight developing also to the edge of the board. Again, the knight is not developing in the right direction. The right direction is, as we said, the center, the middle of the board. And that would be to develop the knight to c6, towards c6. Or, as I mentioned before, to first develop the bishop to g7. Now white plays bishop to c4. White continues the right way. Again, developing a next piece, the bishop, controlling a center square on d5, as well as it prepares the next Step, another principle, to put the king in safety by castling on the next move. Black plays b6. Black farther delays the development of the king's side and putting the king in safety. It's another error. It's better to do bishop to g7 instead of b6 first. Again, b6 does not directly control the center. White plays castle. White follows the third principle that we've been mentioning, putting the king into safety. That's very, very important. You'll see what happens to black when black delays it too long. Black responds with bishop b7. That's not a bad move for a change. The bishop develops and controls two center squares, attacks the pawn on e4, as well as controls the d5 center square. White responds with knight to c3. This move develops, protects the pawn on e4 that was hanging, as well as controls a second center square on d5. And now black plays bishop to g7. Finally, it was about time. That's a good move. Black develops and controls two dark center squares on e5 and on d4 also prepares to castle. And now white plays bishop to f4. White continues developing. Finally, all the pieces are developed very nicely, all of them controlling the center. This bishop controls the e5 square. Black plays knight to b4. That's another common mistake that a lot of beginner players do. They move the same piece twice in early in the game. That's a mistake. The first thing you should do in the beginning of the game 
move each piece out once to develop, as we said, preferably towards the center, not to the edge of the board. Put your king in safety. And that is black's problem, that black is delaying and delaying, castling, putting the king in safety. We'll see why it's not so good to move the same piece over and over. White plays queen to d2. This is a very typical move. It has many purposes. The most obvious one is to putting a double pressure on the knight on h6. That's very much misplaced. Also, a more general idea of the move is to connect the two rooks, which is very good to do. Black plays knight to g4. Black had not much of a choice. Because the bishop was attacking the knight, the knight had to move. Otherwise, black would lose a piece, of course. Now, moving backwards is naturally not very tempting to do. That's why black went to g4, but that has its own problems, as we'll see very shortly. Now white plays knight to b5. OK, so the move is knight to b5. It has a lot of threats. Directly, the queen is attacking the knight, which is a discovered attack because the knight moved. Also, the knight itself has a direct attack on to the c7 pawn to capture it, making a fork. So it's a very, very serious threat. Black retreats the knight to a6. The only way black could defend both the knight as well as the threat of knight c7, forking the rook and the king, was to retreat the knight to a6. That's a sad thing. That's already the third move with the same piece early in the game. That's very, very bad. And now white pushes the pawn to e5. Now it's time to gain space. Also, it's a move that takes away some crucial squares. It takes away the f6 square from this knight to retreat. Now this knight is getting into trouble. If you look closely, it has no place to go. Therefore, white has now a direct threat to trap that knight by simply attacking it next move. Black responds with h5. h5 is an awkward looking move, but the purpose is to at least make the h6 square safe for the knight by the protection of both the rook and the bishop. Without making that move, after h3, the knight retreating on h6 would be lost. So that is the purpose of the move of h5. White continues with knight to g5. White plays very aggressively again, putting a new threat on the other side, on f7. Now there is a very, very serious threat of either knight taking, making a fork on the queen and the rook, just like we did before on the other side, or bishop taking on f7 also with a decisive attack. Black plays knight to h6. Black retreats the knight to protect the f7 square. White continues with queen to d3. Queen to d3 improves the position farther and it creates a tactical threat. One very important thing we need to remember, that when we have a lot of positional advantages, little strategical advantages, you eventually reach a point when you need to involve tactics, cash-in time, to translate, to transform the small advantages into actual material advantage or checkmate. Now, in this case, the threat is to actually sacrifice the knight on f7. And when black would recapture, then the queen would take on g6, having a dual threat on the knight and the bishop all at once, gaining at least two pawns and still maintaining the attack. Let's go back now to the position after queen d3 when it's black's turn. Black finally castles. Black did castle here, but it unfortunately causes another problem. White immediately played queen takes g6. Here. All of a sudden, the pawn on g6 became unprotected because of an existing or 
right just now created pin because black castled the pawn on f7 is pinned therefore white could capture the pawn on g6 now black is in serious serious trouble there is a threat to checkmate on h7 and there is only one way to protect against that rook to e8 black needed to make some space for the king to try to run towards f8 white now plays knight takes f7 of course this is a totally winning position for white and there are many ways to win but here comes the fastest one knight takes on f7 now this creates a direct threat on the queen as well some discovered other checks moving away the knight and checkmating very quickly as we'll see black captured the knight with knight takes f7 black didn't have much of a choice if he didn't want to lose his queen but this also ends the game very quickly white played bishop to h6 white could recapture the knight on f7 which would also lead to pretty quick checkmate but the actual quickest way to end the game is to use another pin the fact that the bishop is pinned on g7 it cannot move away it cannot capture the bishop and neither can the knight they are both pinned from the white pieces and black cannot prevent the checkmate of next move queen takes g7 well this game was a very good example what happens when white follows all the right principles as of developing the pieces controlling the center putting the king in safety while black on the other hand breaks all the rules by not controlling the center developing the pieces in the wrong direction and delaying castling too far. Of course, only beginner players would play like this as black. However, it's very important to know how to take advantage of these errors and that's what we were trying to show in this game.